Just give me an applause. Sink. <laughs> well, if I'm going to be you, uh -huh. I'm going to need to get one of your team to send me the graphics. Okay. And we can do the little like. We can do be like. Today we're talking about Gerald Undone, and it's not good. <laughs> but that's, that does sound like something you would say. <laughs> it's hot under these lights. I'm noticing. You got them turned up. Do you want the AC on? Do you uh, want to? Do you want to see? Do you want to see what uh, is going to cause me to have an early heart attack because it's the AC unit? Okay. Seventy-five. Well, that's some. It gets loud. So you're you're an expert. Uh, how do I fix this? How much money you got? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you willing to move? <laughs> uh, yeah. Normally we preach all the room. That makes so. sense. Were you, why didn't you do that? You knew when I was coming. Um, I just wanted you to suffer. Okay. So. Yeah, I, uh, thought it would be I feel like even the labs are going to pick that up. Oh right. yeah, I'm really hearing it. <laughs> okay. It's pretty. It's pretty bad. Turn it off, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so we're in your main shot here, yes. right? And we're going to do a little walk through it first. This is what it looks like. I can kind of see myself on that monitor there. Yeah. And uh, it's it's very simple. Uh, we've done. We discovered we discovered corner shots. Like I feel like Ar Archimedes or something. I, yeah. I discovered <laughs> the angle. I love you know to tell you. About I always it. noticed about your shots before I was here was that you have extremely hard kind of like kick lighting, hair lighting, and it's this bad boy. I always yeah. figured out where it was coming from. That'll get you. You see that? That's coming right across. See what I talked about? Kick, yeah. Kicking, kicking stance. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, yeah, we got Patrick Tommaso operating the camera. He's on the FX30 again today with the 10 to 20. So on this camera, which is this the one you use pretty much all the time? Yeah. Right? So we use uh, A75 now. Got Alpha 7R5. You got to make sure you mix the Roman with the Greek. And the <laughs> Are you taking points off? I don't even have to be mean. He's going to do it for himself. I, I like this camera. Um, we got that in December. We were shooting on a pa Panasonic UX180 and then oh, okay. sometimes an A7 III. Right. A7R3, A73R. I don't know where the R goes, but it has an R in the name. Then it's A7R3. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been two generations prior to this one. Um, probably not the most ideal video camera, though. More of a it, photo yeah, camera. Yeah, well, and it cuts off at 30 minutes, too. Right, yeah. So that was problematic. Um, are you shooting in 4K or 8K on this we one? We do 4K 60, and. Why 60? Uh, it's better. At what? It's more. <laughs> It is more. <laughs> the number is larger. <laughs> well, why not? Like I, I know the, um, the tech scene is they don't do twenty four, but why? Yeah. Why not thirty? Why do you jump to sixty? So, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to like psychoanalyze why I chose that originally. I think it's because sixty FPS is the minimum you want in games. I never really thought about it until really the last couple of years, and I think by that point we were too deep into sixty FPS to go back. Well, let's see what else you've got that uh, maybe you were too deep into to go back on. Um, so we got A7R5. I do see you have an overhead camera here. Do you yes. use this one much? We just set this up okay. uh, like a week or two ago. Is it another the same or is it different? This is the A7 III. So um, we tend to hang on to gear as long as possible sure. and deploy it somewhere else. So yeah, A7 III is up here. And uh, it's we've got the table taped off. So you can see the markers to roughly center the mat. I think there's some more under there for the smaller mats. and. Uh, we just is the shot it. basically like you leave the mod mat here. And yeah, then I think it's basically like here to here. And then what do you do on it? For tear like, down. So tear down. Yeah, taking stuff apart. So we, we just added that. We didn't mention because there's nothing really mentioned. But you don't have any fixed microphones Correct, uh, here. Yeah. You you right now you're using the the tentacle trackie that I provided. Right. But usually use the Sennheiser. Yeah. So we use a Zoom uh, H6n I think it's called, which is very old. I got this in probably like 20. 16 maybe 2015 so we um tend to keep stuff until it breaks yeah so i got that like 2016 these are newer so yeah these are sony uh or sennheiser i mean g4s um and we just got these we were using g3s up until a couple months ago we have one of these nan lights back here for just some color we added this recently we have this uh, like i was saying we i try to find a use for old equipment if we can so um, I actually, I forget what this is called. It's been a while. Uh, oh, it's, it's a timpani light. Oh, so, I'm familiar with that one. so this was early in RGB lights that were affordable. Well, that took a while to kick on, eh? Yeah, it has some, so sometimes you have to turn it off and on again because the light doesn't work. Uh, it's a firmware issue. We but just <laughs> wanted to throw some warmth on the wall? Yeah, we wanted to get like kind of that fake sunlight into the room type sure. of thing. And then this is your super hardcore hair light. Yeah. So 120D with a Fresnel 
and set to 60% power. So have, have you seen the 120D bug? The 9900% um, bug, you know what I'm talking about? I don't, know. Okay. On the Mark I or Mark II, that was a Mark II. So check this out. OK, this is a 120D Mark II, 99%. Yeah, so 99%. And this one has a problem where within minutes of going to 100, uh, it just stops. It just cuts off. Really? And so this has happened now on two or three of ours where they we, we run them all at 100 normally if they're like bounces. And uh, for some reason, over time, they just degrade to where it's like 99, then you get down to 98. So I don't know if it was a bad run or what. Are you manually controlling all these lights or do you are you using the Sidus link? Are you using a remote for the lights? I well? use uh, this remote, so just the aperture remote, and then I manually turn those two on. Are they all in the same group or each one's for a different light? Uh, a is for this set. And D is for that one over there. And that's all we got right now. I think we have B down in the testing room. Steve generally has uh, scripts, like, or, or, or would, you, would you call them scripts? Or yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, this, is, this was some news episode from maybe a year or two ago, yeah. Mind if I take a sheet? Is Go it notes, it. though, like, or is it? It's fully written. So uh, this is what you want to say for the most part? For the most part. But um, I find that I, I'll allow myself to go off script as I go, it, it helps it feel more natural, I feel like. So like, especially if it's particularly technical, as I start reading a sentence, I'm like, I really didn't caveat this enough, which is part of the problem we have with video length. Right. Videos get longer because I do that, but then uh, I mean, it's a choice, like, do you want them to know everything, right? Or, or do you try to make it more consumable? I always respected the fact that you were able to build an audience with 30 minute, like, really dense, Videos. I'm I'm shocked and continue continue to be uh, grateful that people actually care about the, that kind of depth. Still, we're going to make this video really long and boring, though. And we'll Sorry, test, we'll <laughs> test that theory. You have to cut a lot. Forty minutes. No, we're just going to leave it all in. <laughs> gonna, but I do want to move away from this yeah. fifteen hundred watt heat crazy do area. Do you want the AC on? <laughs> no, we just need to we turn can these stop lights for off. five minutes. No one do. will know. It can be cut. Okay, have you heard of Adobe Premiere? <laughs> Is that what you guys use? Yeah. Taking yeah. points off for that. Da Vinci? What are you, Sony Vegas? Sony Vegas. <laughs> front, front page. I'll, I'll give you points for those references. <laughs> uh, yeah, I use, I use Resolve. Yeah, DaVinci okay. Resolve. I'm going to cut on this camera. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to. Oh, we didn't mention this. That's quite the HDMI cable you got there, Steve. I know. Lovely uh, yeah. choice. No, they're awesome. Have you actually. So, this guy, <laughs> I mean, it's all about. The face, right? right? I can trust this you guy. Can tr <laughs> <laughs> That's in the sleaziest <laughs> one. <laughs> uh, we gave Steve this cable literally before we started this video. But look, look at this is the new right angle HDMI cable. Since this video probably doesn't have a sponsor, <laughs> buy the cables. Uh, look at look at this. Where do you sell them? Look at this everywhere. B like B and H, if you're in the U.S., Amazon. If you're in Canada, we got some stores in Canada. I'm trying to help you plug your own thing. You seem to do well when you plug other people's <laughs> things. You gotta, be, you gotta be okay with plugging your thing. You're like, buy them. Yeah. Where? F figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard. <laughs> yeah, this. So we have that one set there, and then we we haven't done one in a little while, but live streams happen at that larger table. Right. So and it's also nice for um, case reviews stuff where we have big things. You know that kind of take a lot of the shot. Yeah. So, and then. It's the camera closet, whenever you want to check this. This looks like gear. it's all batteries. Yes. All right, let's see what we got going on here. Sony DSLR. Well, that's a misnomer. You don't have any Sony DSLRs. You don't have any Alpha 99s or whatever. I don't know what things mean anymore. They were DSLRs when I started buying them. Sony DSLRs? Uh, I don't know. The Sony. What do, you, what do you think, audience? Do you think he ever had a Sony DSLR? Like, a Min was it Minolta? Is that who like the Sony version? Was? I did have Minolta's. Really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Explain to me the difference, because all I know is the acronym, right? Single lens reflex, pentaprism, mirror box, actuator linked to the shutter, C through the viewfinder, fire off the shutter, out of the way, the film, the CCD, and then CMOS. The mirrorless camera, no such mechanism exists. Okay. The little shutter. By the way, we never talk. What lens are we running over here? It looks like a G Master from a distance. <coughs> How many guys? 24 to 70? Yeah. GM2? GM2, yeah. Nice. That's a good combo. This is all new stuff. Yeah, yeah. I think this is, I think this is another, this might be our GM, no, that's a GM2 also, yeah. So you got two of the new lenses, but you saved the old camera, right? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And we have a GM1. Which we had for a while. So curious, actually. Uh, this might be a good case. Um, we're we're in a studio, but we're in a generally warmer climate than a Canadian. 
And as we've already as discovered, evidenced by your continual exactly and hideous and I saw that said 75 degrees over there. <laughs> Which is what's that like? Celsius. 20, 23, 22. No, that's already in Celsius. Oh, there you go. Yeah, 75 yeah. Celsius, <laughs> exactly. Um, the A7R5 for you in 4K60, what's your thermal performance been like? Uh, no problems. I mean, I haven't tested it or anything. How long would you say you roll for a general like an A roll recording? Longest is probably, it's video length plus 10, typically. So. Really? Yeah. That was a flex. I don't know if you saw that, but that was a flex. He's like, well, how long do I upload for? 28 minutes? That's how long I roll for. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. How long's the <laughs> video? Yeah. The worst environment we were in was, uh, it was 115 degrees in Arizona, so when we were there filming. Right. That cameras, cameras don't work in Arizona if they don't have a fan. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it was a problem. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you with this guy? Yeah, I think we we wrote we shot at 1080 60. That was our solution. So we sure we got down from 4K. Um, the reason why I asked was because uh, you know it's uh, it's hard to provide reliable overheating results on cameras because of mm. changing it. Like everybody uses a different scenario and different humidity and different yeah. everything. But I was curious to see 4K 60 on an A7R5. You said you've been good for say 40 minutes. In oh there? yeah, no problem here. If you ever want to do for reals thermal testing. Let me know, I can help out. Do room temp at 21, parameters, simulate a higher ambient, radiator, thermal chamber, right. thermocouple. I don't want to do camera reviews, I'm not qualified. I am qualified to do thermal testing, so if you ever want to get into it, uh, I could probably, it's possible we could run the thermal tests for you and then just give me, here's the data. You know? That's interesting. We, what these guys decided, that's the audience. Yeah, you know, what do you guys <laughs> think? Does that sound exciting to you? All right, what were we talking about before? I, I was, we were talking I was about looking batteries, at your batteries, then but I'm really excited about the, about pen prisms. I, I'm really excited about thermal testing on camera. All right, what do we got? Sony L series batteries. Steve went for the big box. See, he bought the, the gray, the official Sony one. Nobody, ha nobody has the official <laughs> Sony ones. Like at a tour. You could say like $200 more than a regular battery. Very expensive, yeah. I mean like this one was too, this Panasonic one. Yeah, so this is the exception to the we have one camera because <laughs> we still use this one occasionally. <laughs> so this is a Panasonic, I think it's a UX180, I think it's right. called. And uh, it's 4K60 early days, probably a 2016 purchase or something. When I bought this camera, most of our videos that were doing well were from sort of field reports. So like going to a convention. Right. And for those, it was, I, I don't know, to us, it was important at the time to uh, be able to like plug XLR straight into the camera. How were you operating at those times? Did, did you have an operator? Were you putting them on a tripod with somebody shouldering this thing? Uh, we would typically put it on a tripod for the shoots, for yeah. interviews, yeah. Would you travel with the team there, or were you solo? Uh, around then, it was typically plus one, sometimes yeah. plus two. So this is still used for live streams, and um, it's also used for our teardowns. So when we take a thing apart, we typically... Steve's got a little bit of a muscle memory there. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. Did you get that, Patrick? Oh, we got it. <laughs> a little John Wick scene with like a favorite oh, pistol is, or whatever. That's the thing, right? This is the last camera that I really personally used heavily. Right. And um, before I was like, okay, I, I, I'm more qualified to do other things. I need help. And so, yeah, uh, this we use for teardowns because it shoots really flat. And so that helps when there's a bunch of small screws and stuff. Also, the optical zoom is like 20x. It does a pretty tight zoom and stays flat focus. It's a ladder. Yeah. Do they have those in Canada? They do. Why? Uh, <laughs> everybody in Canada is just really tall. Uh, okay. And why? Uh, <laughs> why? Why is it here? Uh, <laughs> I think it's here because we've been installing all these rail systems lately. I asked it's because you got a lot of space, but Patrick keeps tripping over everything, and then there's just a <laughs> random ladder in the room. So. Oh, well, I was trying to set up some traps and, uh, for him. I'm not. Have to take a couple safety points oh, okay. off of that. Yeah. Got OSHA in here. <laughs> okay, what do we got over here? So we have easy rigs for active shoots, okay. active A roll. So I anyway. stand corrected, fam. Look at that. Alpha 65 with a Minolta lens. Yeah. He does have Sony DSLRs. <laughs> <laughs> what we got here? A little Sam Yang 35. Everything's labeled. I mean, I don't even have to like pick things up and dig through. It's like, what have we got here? You know, except for this one. This isn't labeled. Yeah, I need to label that. A macro. Oh no, that's the GM1. Insufficient labeling. Damn it. This is not A roll lighting right now. Yeah, can you imagine? This is how, this is how <laughs> yeah. intense he likes his lighting. He just like gets into like the. Do you next want it out like this? Bam. Holy Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. installed. Pretty much a whole, this is a Manfrotto yeah. like track system. Exactly. And uh, you want to give us a little demo? Yeah, so uh, so for movement, it's got these, we just put these safety cables as a pole, basically. So you can pull the brake, which is just like a, Del a Delrin brake, and roll it back. Uh, thank you. And we've got 
on each side we have um, these pantographs for each of the rail systems. I've never seen these in these pantographs. It's like oddly mechanically satisfying to work with. Uh, so it's got this pulley system. Ooh, that's Listen nice to click. that. That's a yeah. good click. Um, I haven't seen these in a studio before. Sometimes you'll bring it super low and he can orient the light to light it from the and bottom. That's predominantly what this is for is B-roll, this area? Yeah, well, so we've started shooting A-roll. Uh, he uses it mostly for B-roll, but when I'm doing like a GB or CP review now, we like to film um, a basically a corner shot into this corner. This is the, this is how we turn everything on though. So that's a clicky you hear all the clicks. Yeah. So yeah, this, um, this hooks up to basically a receiver and outlets everywhere. Is so this an appropriate application of thermal paste? Is that the correct amount? That's pretty good, <laughs> yeah. That, you should normally use an entire 30 gram <laughs> tube on one CPU. Uh, so we have these, these uh, shots of basically their benchmarks that, that we actually run in the lab down the other way. Are you trying to tell me this is all just a backdrop? Yeah. It's a nine screen and faked. And benchmark it's a, it's a, it's are a your benchmarks a fake, Steve? Is that what you're telling These me? These ones are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. These ones are. Uh, but what's really cool about this, all nine of these screens for people into the computer side of things are running off a single GPU and then a Minis 4 on PC. Uh, so How is it run off a single GPU? Do you have like uh, splitters or something? There's or? just an insane amount of ports on that card. Cool. So this is, oh, wait, it's got, there's some funky audio right there. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, you hearing that? Yeah. You getting that, Patrick? I've yeah. always found that sound blankets work the best when you pile them up on top of each other and put them in the corner they of the room. They were great. Yeah, yeah, that's why we're getting that funky audio over there because <laughs> this is not how you use sound blankets, fam. So that was for our acoustic testing setup, and then we put the hemianechoic chamber in, and now I don't know what to do with them, so. I'm noticing a couple spots, actually, even here. Um, um, ah, uh, you kind of hearing it bounce around? Do it one more time. Yeah. Ricola, have you, uh, but because you, you mostly wear a lab and it's close, yeah. so you find you don't really get it? No, yeah. but if I, if this door is open, if the bathroom door is open. Bathroom, oh wow. You hear that? <laughs> oh wow. Yikes. So if that's open and I'm filming here, I'll, like it's echoing right now. You can, yeah, right? that's wild. If it was me, you know what I do with those sound blankets? I'd put them on wheels. Uh huh. And I would like, when I was shooting over here, yeah. I would just wheel one right here and like close off the room, you know? Like wheel that them makes all sense, around. yeah. Plus, like you said, you're shooting 4K60. What the hell do you care about Echo? <laughs> hey, yo, <laughs> got him! <laughs> <laughs> okay, show me, is, we can't use sound blankets, you know, for, put the $5 stand on a sound blanket, but show me this he Hemi. Let me, uh, let me turn Hemi, off all the lights whatever. first. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, I'll get dinged for more points. What the hell is he talking about? The funny thing is we can't hear him, but the mic can hear him. Like, yeah, <laughs> all we hear over here is like, Dars and Gammon D. No, darn it. But over there, it's like perfect audio. Look at this. Look at this nonsense. Too hot. <laughs> this is the Hemi Anacook chamber. Wow. So, uh, what, what am I tapping for? Like when you kick a tire? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Seems no, pretty that's good. A, that's a good car. <laughs> exactly. Got you air really, in that. You can really feel the Anacook yeah. in that one. You know what do you got? What do you got in there? Definitely so, hemi. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's a hemi. <laughs> hemi anechoic chamber means uh, it is a sound chamber where there's basically wedges on all the walls and the floor is uh, just, just a floor. There's no wedges on the floor. So Don't describe what it looks like. We'll see that. Yeah. Do you want to see what it, it does. Uh, <laughs> so, i move this mic cable. Well, immediate deadening, Immediately. Eh? I wonder what the I wonder what the vibe is for, uh, for the audience. Like, if the microphone, like, I wonder if the noise floor of the microphone instantly. I heard it in my headphones. Yeah, yeah. that's wild. Yeah. So I I was hosting in here the first time the other day, and I started presenting, and uh, as I hosted, I, I continually brought my projection down. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that's the ground yourself. <laughs> you should shock touching it. Too. <laughs> it gets very staticky in here. Why is that? This room is so isolated from everything that there's not many great paths to ground. There are through the outlets, but we're isolated from the floor and there's um, there's basically plastics that uh, that shim the springs. So this floor is on springs. like. Oh, you feel a bounce? A yeah. bouncy house. What a hemianechoic chamber does is it helps to eliminate outside noise 
and set a really low noise floor. So the decibel level, as you notice when you're talking in here, you talk quieter. Uh, so any anything that's uh, any noise that's made in here, you get basically like one pass. It doesn't really reflect, hence anechoic. What value does it add to test an environment that no one lives in? And because it's so quiet, it's like so. It seems like a, I, I'm sure you have a counterpoint, but yeah. on the surface, that seems like a good argument. It's a great question, yeah. and it makes perfect sense to ask the question. So the reasoning is, uh, in a test environment, what you're trying to do is eliminate all variables to make sure that when we compare one product to the next a week later, we're being fair to both of them. In case now, your environment changed. Right. So it's amazing, like with how sensitive the I don't have it in here, but how sensitive the microphones are. If there's a train like a couple miles away we'll pick up a low frequency if we're just testing in the, the room. But with the chamber, we can kill all that noise. And so- Interesting. Yeah, and so one of the problems is- super So it's less about measuring fringe cases and more about keeping a consistent test case for regular use exactly. case. Exactly, uh, yeah. If I can ask, uh, what, is it, what does it cost to build this? Well, we publicly said it, so it was, it was about a quarter million to build it. So- Whoa, it feels so different when you come yeah. What an adjustment. <laughs> totally. You spent too long in there, warp yeah. your brain. Yeah, so this insanity, what's this all about? Yeah, so this is basically an eight foot long muffler more or less. So this is this stuff that, I mean, it looks really cool, but this is basically similar to the wedge design where it feeds the AC in from the opposite side. It comes out here. So this is the return. The other side's the supply. So this right. is coming into the room. And uh, the the length of it allows the air to come in, get filtered through effectively a big filter system, all these um, mesh panels to deaden it and silence it. So this is where you edit? Yes. Well, do you edit, do you edit much? Like I actually it? do still edit a lot. Yeah. yeah. Was it that you edited it primarily and then you stepped away from it or? I, well, I started editing because I was working solo and uh, I, I've always done some of the editing. It just depends because when the topics get really specific or technical, if it starts to take more time to convey what I need on screen than to do it, I'll do it a lot of the time. But for the most part, Vitaly takes care of- Is that your primary editor? All the editing, yeah. Is he any good? He's very good. Okay. So are we all gamers in this room? Is this the nexus is the this like Is this like a NVIDIA CEO get on stage presentation? Like, what's up gamers, as you all know? What's either your best game, if it was to get competitive up in here, or your favorite game? Uh, I used to be okay at Rocket League. I have not played for like eight months, uh, so probably not good now. Uh, competitive? No, I, I played TF2 for a while. If you had to throw down to save your life. To yeah. save my life? Yeah, that's right, it was like, you must win at this game. What game oh, would you no. choose? I mean, it would probably end up being TF2 and then I would die. So I'd, I mean, <laughs> but that's what okay. What character? Scout. I'd he looks like a scout, doesn't he? <laughs> you, you got, you're giving off scout vibes. What about you, Vitaly, do you game? Am I? Are you a gamer? You can't call the channel gamer. We're, che we're testing your game. We're <laughs> checking your gamer badges here. I, try I tried to play the Diablo 4. It didn't end well. Uh, <laughs> the game? Hey, yeah. <laughs> the end game doesn't play well. And what about you, Steve? To save my life? Yeah, to save your life. What's your best competitive game? Uh, was Age of Empires 3. Of course he was going to say an RTS. Uh, I was. Why? It's always like a cop out answer. Why? Maybe I was like, number one ranked in the world for AOE 3 for a little bit. <laughs> that's, that sounds impressive, actually. So now it's 70 degrees in here, eh, Steve? Yeah. What the hell is this? Is you, you hear the... Is it, you hear this lawn and these are your notes? But I got something better for you than these notes, uh, uh -huh. Steve. I prepared uh, some benchmarks for you. Uh, is this from my... Uh, oh, this is Data from that means stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is how you perform compared to all the other studios I've toured. And you can figure it's out- It's impressive. <laughs> I mean, uh, <laughs> it, I, I think- It's uh, all in how you orient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Depends how you look at it. Right. Uh, and as customary, because you passed, I would say that I was pretty soft. I would say it's pretty soft on, on Steve. But the Jesus, stop tripping over the headsets. <laughs> I'm not used to the space. Uh, we're going to give you a little- Purple star Thank there. You. Can you stand here, Patrick? Have you ever been in a Have you ever been in a it's forest? Right yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's like Steve, you come out of the shot, Patrick, yeah, you stand shot. wide, and it's like, just tell me what is the lighting in this? <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of like, and there's like, there's this one, yeah, and then one, two, when this three. craziness over here, it's I don't really, 
the thing is, I I don't want to I don't want to knock anything that works. You know what I mean? So uh -huh. like it, it works. So what do I have to say? But I can say that I don't understand it in terms <laughs> of like if you think of it from like a lighting design, it's yeah. like well, okay, it's going to be motivated by this, and then we're going to use that, and we're going to need to fill it in a little bit there because the cut. No, this is just like what if we got a bunch of lights, put them at 100 percent, and just kind of shot them around the room a little bit, and it's like yeah, it'll look bright. <laughs> <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> So this is not a click. It is a click, but it's a you have to be qualified. I'm taking to points it. off. <laughs> you got to press the, the the pocket clippy. What? Thing. Press this down. See? Why would you do it like that? To deceive people, so they can't click a pen that they're not qualified to click. You get to press play and record, and you uh -huh. like, and then the radio plays, and you, but it's like the top forty, and, you, and like <laughs> song thirty nine is one you want. So you're like cutting your own, you're, you're like mixing your own yeah, tape. Yeah, I never did that. No, did you, you do that? Yeah, obviously. Okay. You think you think I know the finger combination if I didn't do that? This is I muscle have... memory, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Why'd you bring we? You, you messed up the flow, Steve. We're over here now. We haven't finished over here. We're walking back and forth. People are like, tell me I'm more about that. I'm trying to throw you off. It's yeah, yeah. a <laughs> truck simulator. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> honestly, though. If you don't, he if put put a good pair of headphones on, good fair headphones. Good fair headphones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> put those on. Okay. Put some respect on my Gundam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Good enough, Patrick. Good enough for me. Good job, Steve. Thanks. Congratulations. I passed. I think. Did like an '80s cop thing, like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>